Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to learn the visual pathway liens in detail. But before that, I request you to go through the video shared on the description section to understand the anatomy of the visual pathway first. So to quickly reinforce what we have learned up till now, this is the emergence of the optic nerve from both optic discs. This is the right and this is the left optic nerve. At the level of optic chiasma, the nasal fibers decussate. However, they have temporal fibers which are highlighted in red color. They pass ipsilaterally. This is the formation of optic tract. And once the fibers are relayed in the lateral geniculate bodies, these are the optic radiations which pass posteriorly and go to the visual area of the occipital lobe, primary visual area 17, along with the secondary visual areas area 18 and 19. Now we need to understand how the image is formed on the retina. If we look carefully, this is the right field of VN, this is the left field of VN. The red color shows the nasal side of the right and left field of VN respectively, and the green color, it highlights the temporal sides of the field of VN. The nasal side falls on the temporal side of the retina, and the temporal field of VN falls on the nasal side of the retina. So if we say that the nasal fibers which emerge from the nasal side of the retina, they actually carry the temporal field of VN. This is true on both sides. Similarly, the fibers which emerge from the temporal side of the retina, which are highlighted in red color here, they actually carry the nasal field of VN. So now with this information, we need to understand what will be the impact of uh, Leon's on our VN. Let's say number one is the lien at the optic nerve. If there is a lien in the right optic nerve, what will happen? There will be complete loss of VN on the right side. And this is because there is transduction of the nasal fibers and the temporal fibers of the right eye. So if there is a lien of the right optic nerve, there will be a condition which we call as the monoocular vision loss. On the other hand, the condition emerges where there is a lien involving the lateral part of the optic chiasma only. If we look carefully, there is only involvement of the temporal fibers in the lateral lien of the optic chiasma, which actually carry the nasal field of VN. So if there is a lien of the lateral part of the optic chiasma number two, the condition which we call, which we call as ipsilateral nasal hemianopia, ipsilateral nasal hemianopia, because the nasal side of the field of VN of the same eye will be affected because of the transaction of the temporal fibers. However, the left eye remains unaffected. Now we move on to the third condition. This is the condition which causes transaction of the optic chiasma at the center involving the nasal fiber decussation from both sides. So this lien will affect the nasal fibers going from the left to right and the fibers going from right to left. So the condition here, because we know that the nasal fibers are actually carrying the temporal field of both eyes, so the temporal field of both eyes will be lost and the condition that we call as bitemporal hemianopia. So this is by temporal hemianopia because of the loss of the temporal field on both sides. So this was ipsilateral nasal hemianopia condition number two and this is by temporal hemianopia condition number three. Now we move on to the fourth condition. This condition needs to be understood really well because if you notice that this is this shows the lien of the optic tract and we focus and if we focus on the fibers the optic tract carries the temporal fibers from the same eye but they carry the nasal fibers from the opposite side so the lien of the temporal fibers of the same eye means loss of the nasal field of the same eye and lien of the nasal fiber means loss of the temporal field of that eye. So in this condition, a condition will be produced which is called contralateral homonymous hemianopia. 
this condition will be contralateral homonumbers hemianopia and what will be the effect on the vision it will cause the loss of the nasal field of the same side and loss of the temporal field of the opposite side now we move, move on to the fifth condition which shows the lesions of the optic radiations 5 and 6 both show the lesions of the optic radiations but at 5 we have the lesions of the upper fibers And at 6, we have the lien of the lower fibers. The information lying underlying important is that the upper fibers, they actually carry the inferior field of VN and the lower fibers carry the upper field of VN. So if there is a lien of the upper fibers of the optic radiations, it will cause contralateral field of VN loss, but it, the impact will be only on the lower field of VN. So it will be called inferior contralateral inferior quadrantonopia. This condition will be contralateral inferior quadrantonopia. And the underlying reasoning behind is that the upper fibers, they carry the lower field of VN fibers. So the lower field of VN will be impacted. And because the optic radiations, they are also carrying the temporal fibers from the same side and the nasal fibers from the opposite side so the impact will be similar to the contralateral homonymous homonymous hemianopia but will, it will involve only the lower field of VN. similar will be true with the lesions of the lower fibers of the optic radiations but in this case it will cause the contralateral superior quadrantinopia loss of the superior quadrant field of VN condition number six now we move on to the last condition seven which shows the lien at the level of the visual cortex so what will happen if there is a lien at the level of the visual cortex the condition will be similar to the contralateral homonymous hemianopia but in this condition there will be sparing of the macula and the reason for this macular sparing is that macula gets its dual blood supply from the posterior cerebral arteries and the middle cerebral arteries. So if there is a, a hemorrhage or infarct or the clot formed in the posterior cerebral arteries, the visual cortex will be affected. But macula will be spared because it will rely on its contralateral blood supply through the middle cerebral arteries. So in this condition, contralateral homonymous hemianopia will be produced, but it will be produced with the macula sparing. Thank you. I hope it will help. Best of luck.